Welcome to Fatigued But Not Forgotten. As you might know by now, we're rival writers in a stalled elevator with you, a group of high-powered producers. We only have 15 minutes before the elevator is repaired, and one of us is going to pitch you a movie, a long-needed sequel, prequel, remake, or remakequel to a movie that never got one, and the other has a vested interest in shooting it down, because we're rivals. Tonight, my pitch was written by a live studio audience. <laughs> Son of a bitch, this is fatigued, but not forgotten. My name is Matt Reifschneider, and I am joined by my, insert name here, co-host, <laughs> Sean Kaler. How are you doing today, Sean? Canned laughter. Canned laughter. Canned laughter. <laughs> Canned ooh. I am ready to pitch my passion project today. Oh, you're pitching a for... passion project now? I am. Uh, I, I'm really curious what your passion project is. And fair warning to everyone out there listening that uh, more than likely we're going to have to throw a spoiler warning onto this episode just in case we're going to spoil uh, a film that uh, we are going to be talking about today. But Sean is going to be pitching this film to me, and uh, I have no idea what it is, first and foremost. And uh, the structure of this is going to run a little bit like a courtroom. He's going to have four minutes to pitch his film. I'm going to have four minutes to make an opening statement on why his opening statement is dumb. And that's spelled with two M's. And then we're going to have a nice little debate. And we're going to end on a closing statement of two minutes each. So hopefully everyone gets the structure. If not, you'll catch on pretty quickly on how this goes. All right. Timer is set. And... I am ready. So, right, I'm going I'm to pull up my thing in case it's a movie I haven't seen. I'm <laughs> nervous. I'm nervous. All right. So, for my movie, I am going with the immortal 90s classic, one that defies easy genre description, but is undeniably a genre film. That's right. 1995's Hackers. A great cast. Johnny Lee Miller, Fisher Stevens, Angelina Jolie, Matthew Lillard alone is fun to see in this movie. The crime plot is actually fairly clever. Its real main problem is actually that the hacking itself was kind of ludicrous, not that we really knew any better in those days. Regardless... The basic idea of a scheme to steal millions using fractions of pennies that exist but are usually rounded out by computers is already clever, and obfuscating it by creating a virus that is an eco-terrorist threat and blaming innocent hackers who stumble onto the plot is genius. And it's an energy that we can bring forward even 25 years later. That's right, this is not a theoretical pitch for a sequel in the proper timeline. We are going real time, baby. What I propose is that, like the real story of Kevin Mitnick, upon whom Dade is heavily modeled and the direct subject of the unreleased air quote sequel, played by Skeet Ulrich in that movie, uh, true story. Our subject, <clears throat> um, sorry, our young Zero Cool eventually has a major falling out with his friends after becoming a white hat security consultant hacker um, a few years after the first film. He and his team are called in when a major bank reports repeated uh, hacks costing him so much money. And the attacks appear to be coming from Dade's old friends, including Kate Acidburn Libby. Meanwhile, Kate, Serial Freak, Joey, and Nikon are on the run and eventually are outmaneuvered and caught by Dade, who claims to want to help but is spurned. When he himself is implicated in the next hack, he must release and work with his now frenemies to discover the truth <clears throat> before they're all put away for good. The first suspect is, of course, the plague, a man with every reason to plot vengeance. We find him in a maximum security prison, empty room, no electronics, just piles and piles of security protocol and programming manuals, current web protocols, everything someone like the plague could do to keep current on the world he cares about. 
but now he's a disheveled, crazy looking more like his old age makeup from the end of Hackers 1 than expected. And he's useless. No matter how many trails lead to him, he has no internet access. Even though Data's a sellout and the rest are still childish to him, he began to find common ground in the basic love of the game again. After Joey makes an incredible break and they discover the plague is the mastermind, he had used a cell phone stashed in his books, hollowed out, of course. Um, afterwards, the plague is defeated and sentenced to life in a Faraday cage. Something about this is too easy for Dade, though. Suddenly it hits him. Joey couldn't have figured it out externally. The plague covered his tracks too well. They couldn't even find the stolen money because it was Joey all along. As the real mastermind, he had slipped the plague the phone and he was sitting on the prize. Freak announced that Joey now has his handle. Traitor. Boom. Hackers 2. Hack harder. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my pitch. Two, one, boom. Top that. <clears throat> I'm sorry, what? What was that? You put me to sleep with your entire fucking script. <laughs> it's all and <laughs> dick. <laughs> Seriously though, did you did you write a fanfic script for this? I got to know. I got to know because that's what it sounds like. This sounds like pure fan fiction because no studio is ever going to buy into Hackers 2, Hack Carter or, you know, uh, the hacks of life is what I would call it. Uh that would be what my title is for this movie. So as much as your movie is great, because it's not, I just want to point out that right now, I think you're forgetting that we live in 2020. And that even though hacking is now an everyday form of life, nobody cares about hacking movies. Can you name the last great hacking movie? I mean, you mentioned White Hat, and that kind of brings to mind Black Hat, which, uh, you know, was one of the biggest bombs of all time. Just saying. And that movie had like Chris Hemsworth and Michael Mann behind it. Some serious heavyweight talent. And that movie couldn't pull it off. And I think that's kind of inherently the problem with making a franchise out of Hackers. Is that while Hackers has found its cult following over time. And that includes, um, obviously you, not me. I don't think I've seen the movie since 1995. So, fair point. <laughs> so, um, but... It's found its cult following. I have a lot of friends who enjoy this movie. I do think this movie is very distinctly 90s. And the fact that you opened up your statement by saying this this movie defies genre already makes it kind of a hard sell towards an audience. Like, if you're not aiming for a hacking audience, which Black Hat certainly tried to aim for a hacking audience using a lot of the lingo and uh, kind of pushing that as a forward theme, that audience didn't show up for it. So then the question remains, like, if you're going to define the genre, defy the genre and really look at combining genres like the first one did, you're going to get a mixed message for marketing and a lot of things like that. And unfortunately, I just don't think as 25 years old this movie is that even its cult following is going to be one that jumps in. Maybe, maybe you can sell it as a straight to VOD kind of film or something to that effect. Keep the budget low. But ultimately, no matter even if you bring back the original cast or anything like that, I don't think that this movie is going to find its audience in a 2020 environment. Uh, you know what? Your pitch itself, despite my joke about falling asleep during it, is, is a well thought out pitch for a sequel. I just don't know even making a sequel at this point is going to be able to sell to an audience. So if I was a producer like these fine people over here in the elevator who keep hitting all of the goddamn buttons, I have to say that I just don't know if hackers itself is going to be the franchise that people want and definitely the franchise that they don't need. So all in all, as much as I enjoyed hackers back in 1995, I've never felt the inclination to revisit it and i'm not sure i would feel the inclination to follow up on a sequel even if it is a direct sequel that is you know a timely one that actually sits in the modern time period i just think that that's something that myself and an audience isn't going to buy into 
And uh, so you can all just hit control alt delete on that fucking script and that email and just send it over to the garbage can, clean out that garbage can, uh, and just forget about this all happened. <laughs> Close enough. Um, now you did it with like four to go. So, um, cool. <clears throat> yeah, the problem with everything you said is how terribly wrong it is. Um, <laughs> this is not fan fiction. This is loving. No, I'm. Uh, you know what? You're a jerk. I've got nothing to say you're to you. Jer- <laughs> you know. I will give it to you that what you wrote is incredibly well thought out. I just don't think it's a movie that people are going to want to see. And unless, I mean, I guess riddle me this. I mean, you're going to bring back the original cast, right? But like, you got to inject something new to attract a new audience. I mean, who do you get to direct this? Who do you get to, you know, who else do you get to be as a side character in this, that you could possibly sell this movie to these wonderful producers and uh, be able to attract a wider demographic than, say, the small cult audience that it has? Well, then, I think that is a beautiful question that I will roll perfectly into my closing statement. Okay. Let's see. Um, nobody knows who directed the first Hackers. I've seen this movie a hundred times in my life, and I actually couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. Um, no, it, it was, uh, it was certainly an era and it was certainly very nineties, but it was also like really stylistic. Um, the thing is you basically, you had the net and that was your big hacking movie to compare against. And this at least did interesting things. You've got stuff like uh, a rotating shot around someone in a isolated phone booth and you've got these amazing city-like visualizations of how a computer looks it's completely insane and not at all how computer works but um also i mean don't be too fast to dismiss the cast this is also angelina jolie it's uh fisher stevens not in brown face it's Uh, Matthew Lillard, who has maintained a very, very solid career himself, um, including a very cool recent run on Twin Peaks 3. And can I mention enough that this was like Angelina Jolie's first breakout movie? Um, She was in like Gia and Foxfire before this and stuff, but this was like one of her first major starring roles. Um, And I'm sure, I'm sure she'd be just ecstatic to come back to it as popular as this movie is and has always been he said waiting for a laugh um not getting one (laughs) i refuse (laughs) but uh um on top of that i just think uh hacking and computer and technology is still relevant really really right now and i yeah that's time shit okay okay i mean it's two minutes Two minutes. All right. So, I mean, you've got a point. Hacking is relevant now, right? And that you could make a sequel to Hackers. And if you do it in a way that's clever enough, you might be able to pull it off. But that's the thing. It's like you have to have some kind of a clever to it. I looked up the director of the film because I actually had no idea who it was either. Uh, And you're right. This person (laughs) did not have a memorable uh, run of films. Uh, Directed K-Packs in The Skeleton Key uh, in Inkheart. So, uh, you know, a lot of films that kind of don't exist anymore. So, I mean, all in all, I stand by my statement. I just don't know if an, a modern audience is going to buy into a, a sequel to, to Hackers, particularly one that sticks so close to it. Uh, maybe more of a thematic one. I think if you did, if you could find a some kind of an interesting director to take a stab at it, you might find something unique to say. But I think that this is a film that's too rooted in its time period. Uh, as you said, it's not even really realistic. It's so stylistic 
that it doesn't even ground itself into any real hacking reality, which maybe was the fault of, you know, a movie like Black Hat. I'm just going to keep mentioning Black Hat, I guess, because that's my closest reference of comparison. But, you know, that movie was very, from what I understand, was pretty realistic in terms of, like, the idea and the, the concept of hacking. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that, too, because uh, let's be honest, I only saw that movie once, too, in theaters. I was one of the four people that saw it in theaters. So, but, uh, you know, I just think that I, I got to stand by my point on this and that I just don't think that this is a, a film that can go past the decades. You know, 25 years is a long time and hacking has come a long way. And the style of the film, you would have to change so much that uh, you wouldn't be able to properly do the sequel that I think you would want, even if you could. And that's my closing statement. All right, Dude, hackers. Are you that. fucking serious? I can't believe you did hackers. <laughs> I believe the sound of the elevator starting back up. So, uh, did I convince you? Did I convince you? I feel like I, even though I haven't seen this movie in twenty five years, still had a more convincing argument of why it shouldn't exist. I mean, it didn't even have a huge following back then. So, really, that's all I'm gonna. That's okay. That's my final statement. That's all I got to say at this point. But um, thank you guys for listening to another episode of Fatigued But Not Forgotten. So I hope you guys enjoy what we're doing here. Of course, you guys ultimately let us know if uh, Sean is going to get the money for his hacker sequel, uh, you know, to hack and back, I think is, was another great title that you could give it. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. My titles are way, way too cool for this movie. So... But, um, you know, if you feel like he deserves the money, let us know. Reach out to us. You can get us on the social medias. Uh, you can reach us at uh, Twitter at uh, NFF pod. You can reach us at Facebook at Facebook.com backslash no franchise fatigue. And you can also uh, listen to all of our back catalog over at Anchor and anywhere else that you listen to uh, your podcasts. Anchor.fm, though, uh, houses all of our stuff. And then, um, you know, let us know who wins. I want to see, I because I, I want to see if there's hackers fans out there because I don't think they exist. I think you live in a fantasy world, Sean. I'm sorry, a fantasy hack world. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. But uh, check out our back catalog and uh, please rate, review, subscribe to us, uh, share us with your friends. Uh, that way we can uh, see who's going to win this uh, for this hackers round. And let us know if I get approval for hack two, hack the planet. Hack the planet. I think hackers three has to be only spelled in wingdings. <laughs> <laughs> And then everybody who's like, what is this movie? And they're like, you have to decipher it on fucking Microsoft Word. And then they realize it's Hackers 3 and then nobody gives a shit. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, <laughs> oh, I love poking the bear. All right. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for listening. Check out our back catalog. Let us know who wins. And, uh, you know, until next time, have a good night. <laughs>